So today I'm going to try and convince you that playing the guitar properly with all four fingers like that is kind of a bit lame and actually what you should do is have a go at playing the guitar with three fingers like some kind of blues guitarist. Okay, so I think jazz has got a bit of a weird thing going on where people think it's all very complicated and difficult and requires a very sort of schooled approach. But what I've noticed is that a lot of my favourite players have kind of more of a, what you might first think is a sort of self-taught or street approach to the guitar, where they'll stick their thumb over the top of the neck and move their hand around like this, using mostly three fingers. in a way that seems quite familiar from blues guitar or rock guitar. And what I want to do is I want to make a case why I think that's actually a really good approach to use for jazz as well. These players aren't just nobody, they're some of the classic players, like obviously Grant Green, West Montgomery, George Benson, Charlie Christian, and then actually quite a few modern players who might have more of what we might think of as a school background, including Peter Bernstein, Pat Metheny, even Kurt Rosenwinkel to an extent. Great British guitar players to play this way include Dave Cliff and Jim Mullen, who are some of the most horn-like guitarists I've heard. It's very interesting because although none of these players necessarily use only three fingers, they tend to use mostly three fingers, and their hand positions all look kind of the same, which is that we have the thumb over the top, either you know, all the way over there or perhaps here, and the hand is kind of tilted with respect to the neck. It's not flat on like this as it might be for a more classical style player, but a bit more inclined. And this has an interesting effect because it actually allows the third finger to stretch quite a bit further. And actually the fourth finger is kind of not very useful, if you look. It's got a, oh, what's going on? I can't, I can't get around. Oh, what are the other fingers doing? Oh, I'll reach, I can't reach. But automatically by putting the hand in this position, it kind of means that the little finger can't really be used that much. The other thing, and I think this is quite subtle actually, is that using three fingers only kind of encourages you to shift. I actually find shifting with a little finger really hard. And I sort of don't encourage my beginner students to do that. Um, I was transcribing quite a lot of Alan Holdsworth recently, and I find that he really likes to shift with his little finger. And that's actually one of the most challenging things about his playing. Maybe we don't need to do it. And, and I think this sort of ties into a sort of concept which I call shift, don't stretch. And actually, if you look at quite a few players who play with this kind of hand stance, you'll find that is hand stance a thing? Probably not. But if you look at a lot of players who play with this kind of position, you'll find that very often they'll shift quite effortlessly through stuff that other people might stretch. A very simple example might be um, an A major triad arpeggio. You might play like this in position, with that little finger stretching out like that. And actually, if you play it with three fingers, it sort of suits a much more natural sort of diagonal position like that. And I'm not stretching here at all. I'm just kind of shifting my hand. So. A really good example of how we can employ that in jazz would be this minor 13 shape that Wes Montgomery uses a lot. This is a basis of a lot of Wes Montgomery lines. And if you can see, at no point am I stretching the hand out, but I'm going from here all the way up to here, right? And this is... Um, 
something that Lage Lund, for instance, has noticed, he actually has an approach where he doesn't use the, the little finger, except when he's changing direction in runs and scales and things, and arpeggios. So I think that's a really important principle. And so it sort of encourages you to have these more diagonal positions. If I just play a basic scale, like a B flat major scale, you can see how much these sort of little, these little sort of micro shifts become an integral part of how I play that. And they're not difficult actually. And if anything, I think they enliven the sound. When I tend to play, you know, a positional B flat scale as opposed to one using three fingers. Most people prefer the sound of the second one. I've done I've done loads of tests on that and it's pretty consistent. This has a bounce to it. And I think if you transcribe bebop language, you know, I, I used um, this one from Groove and High a couple of weeks ago. Or it often compels you to phrase a little bit more like a horn because you're sliding around. Like that. It kind of gives you an impetus to actually kind of move the hand and slide and slur. And then you kind of don't pick all the notes either. And then it starts to sound a little bit more flowing. So this is something I think is definitely worth exploring if you haven't explored it. And I feel we often get sort of stuck in these little positions and as shifting is difficult between them, we can get sort of confined and feel that we can't move up the neck. Whereas as Julian Large points out, this is not a huge distance physically. It's just that if we do it with a little finger, actually I can feel the tension in my arm now of moving that, whereas the third finger, it's just easy to do that, right? Let me know what you think in the comments, if you agree or disagree, or if you're giving this a try, if you like it, if you don't like it. It's not what, as I say, it's not what all my favourite players do, but it's what quite a lot of them do. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hope you found this video useful. I'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.